Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. I have a lot of um, excitement about this file. I think that Saskatchewan is the right place to bring a challenge like this. Um, there's been tons of of lockdown measures that have just been really, really aggressive. It's the same province that we have the Burn Temple, $14,000 ticket in. So the, the government in Saskatchewan has been really pushing this lockdown and really enforcing it to the detriment of, of their communities. And everything we've seen so far has shown they're only considering a, the health issue of COVID-19 and not considering anything else, not considering any of our other charter rights when making these decisions. There were a grand total of 140 people in hospital on that date receiving treatment for COVID-19, and just 23 of those were in the ICU. Remember, there are 76 hospitals in Saskatchewan, meaning that you could have over three hospitals per just one COVID ICU patient. That does not make any sense to lock down an entire province, an incredibly sparsely populated province, might I add, of 1.2 million people based on these low COVID numbers. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Some of you may already know that we at Rebel News are launching a charter challenge to the lockdown in Saskatchewan. No government can make a law that does not respect the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So we filed our charter challenge in the Court of Queen's Bench in Saskatchewan after these unconstitutional, unscientific lockdown restrictions cancelled an event we wanted to host in Saskatchewan with Dr. Patrick Moore at the Conexus Arts Centre. Because it makes no sense to continue to cancel that event or any event in Saskatchewan based on the COVID numbers. It makes no sense to drastically limit the civil liberties of Saskatchewan residents. You can see our affidavits and help fund our legal challenge at opensaskatchewan.com. We're currently trying to raise $150,000 to fight for the civil liberties of Saskatchewan residents. We are already helping so many people through fightthefines.com. We're helping them fight their lockdown tickets in Saskatchewan. But we want the lockdown that is punishing those people with fines thrown out altogether. We've got a really great civil liberties lawyer named Sarah Miller from JSS Barristers working very hard on trying to to reopen Saskatchewan. Sarah believes in civil liberties and she's already been helping so many people through fightthefines.com. Now, I caught up with Sarah Miller last week for an update on her efforts to put the government back in its place in Saskatchewan. Take a listen. Yeah, so the public health order uh, has prevented Rebel from actually hosting an event there. So we were able to use that as leverage to be able to directly challenge the public health order in Saskatchewan um, on on the behalf of Rebel News and uh, an, an attendee of the event that Rebel was going to host and Dr. Patrick Moore, who was, um, as your viewers may remember, the, the gentleman who was deplatformed by the city of Regina when people started to raise a fuss about what he was going to talk about. So we have now filed that challenge. We filed it back in January. We're in contact with uh, the government lawyers to make a litigation plan and proceed with that. We've challenged it on the basis of constitution uh, issues and the charter section two. Um, so freedom of association, freedom of um, press, freedom of assembly. And um, it's it's moving along. It, like I have a lot of um, excitement about this file. I think that Saskatchewan is the right place to bring a challenge like this. Um, there's been tons of, of lockdown measures that have just been really, really aggressive. It's the same province that we have the Burn Temple, $14,000 ticket in. So the, the government in Saskatchewan has been really pushing this lockdown and really enforcing it to the detriment of, of their communities. And Everything we've seen so far has shown they're only considering uh, the health issue of COVID-19 and not considering anything else, not considering any of our other charter rights when making these decisions. So 
um, for example, when we were we were tracking this in Saskatchewan to decide when when the best time would be to file for for rebel and and the cause in Saskatchewan and and for the Saskatchewan people. And at some points, movie theaters were allowed to have up to 150 people. But if you were doing a political organized organized event, you couldn't have more than 30. So movie movie theaters were ahead and had better preferential treatment than than a political organization. But political organization like and collective um, events for that are protected by the charter. So we're saying movie theaters not protected by the charter. You can have 150 people, but these charter protected rights they're going to be constrained in such a way so that they're practically useless. And so that's the basis of our challenge. We've now this week. Um, served constitutional notice on both the Saskatchewan uh, provincial government and the federal government. Um, so that's gone out this week. The federal government has now received it, the federal uh, attorney, uh, attorney general in, for Canada in Saskatchewan has now received our constitutional notice. Uh, so we'll see if they want to participate in, in the litigation or, or not, or if they're going to leave it to Saskatchewan. We've also requested uh, any records from the Saskatchewan government in making this order, so we'll see what comes back uh, from that. I've seen, I've been on other files where the government just comes back and says, no, it's all protected by, by cabinet privilege or or some other uh, protective measure, and you get practically nothing. We're we're hopeful uh, that there will be a, a good production coming out of this, so that we can see what the basis of the uh, public health order was, and that will be a real first. Um, there's there's not a lot of information out there. Uh, that's been disclosed by the government about what they know and why they're making these types of orders. You know, that's a really interesting point that you made there. This will be one of the first, if not the first times that the government has to show their work for making these decisions. And this is something that I think as someone who believes in government transparency, they should be producing this every time they uh, draft a lockdown measure and impose it on the public. But you're sort of forcing them to disclose this information to Canadians and to uh, the people of Saskatchewan through your litigation. Yeah, it's really exciting um, to be part of the first to kind of push for this. Uh, it's remarkable, as you say, that it's not a requirement that they think that they're being transparent by just bombarding us with COVID rates every day, right? Um, rather than giving us the a, ba a more balanced perspective and what what the science and the health loss or the health background says. Um, in Alberta, we've been hearing a lot of um, people who have made the pandemic plan many years before we had the pandemic, saying you're not following Alberta, you're not following the pandemic plan. What are you doing? We only know that Alberta is really not following the pandemic plan because people are standing up and saying something. Um, any request for FOIP or disclosure or a tip takes months is often redacted so this is this is a good way to start getting real information out to to the public sarah miller is trying to do something that has never been done yet in this country in an entire year of lockdowns and that is force the government any government to show their work here miller's been trying to get the government to show exactly what materials and data they've been using to justify the ongoing lockdown. And what she's currently doing in Saskatchewan can be used as a template in other provinces if she's successful. But this, as you know, is very expensive, as is any charter challenge. It's time consuming. It demands a lot of research and resources. And at Rebel News, we can't launch a charter challenge without your help. Sarah Miller's already been successful in having several lockdown tickets thrown out of court. She's sharp, she's meticulous, and she cares about freedom and civil liberties. You can see for yourself, she's the right person for this job. And she's been stonewalled so far, which means the government is scared of her. And I think they should be. Can you help us keep Sarah Miller fighting for freedom in our charter challenge in Saskatchewan so that what she does there can be used as a recipe for freedom in other provinces. The civil liberties organizations, well, they are absolutely nowhere to be found. They're not doing this work. So it falls to us here at Rebel News and to all of you at home. We need your help. If you want to help us 
end the lockdown in Saskatchewan and start the cascade of freedom that will end the lockdowns across the rest of the country, please donate today at OpenSaskatchewan.com. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you'd like to help us liberate Saskatchewan from an oppressive lockdown that limits who can gather in private homes and how many people can go to church on Sunday, please donate today to our ambitious legal challenge at OpenSaskatchewan.com.